So here's a characteristic about me. I am a gearhead. So for me personally, what makes a hobby a hobby is the gear, not the activity, right? So for me, I like to, I mean, I participate in, in the activity, the hobby, and I, and I enjoy the activity of the hobby, whatever hobby it is, but I enjoy a lot of activities, right? But for me, like what actually takes an activity into hobby level for me is the toys. I love playing with the toys and it's what makes a hobby last year around for me because even in the off season, I'm playing with them, I'm adjusting them, I'm shopping for more. Like for instance, I recently got into, into backpacking and for the sole reason I got into backpacking had very much to do with the gear that came with it, right? Because I've always liked hiking and hiking has gear and I've always liked camping and camping has gear, but there is a whole new genre of gear that comes with backpacking, right? Like I have backpacks, but I needed to get a backpacking backpack. I have tents, I have lots of tents, but I didn't have a backpacking tent. I have lots of shoes, but I needed to get backpacking shoes, right? I needed to get the gear that goes with the hobby and I love it because it's its, it's, its own genre and it's stuff that I get out only when I'm participating in that hobby, right? So when I go to participate in backpacking or fishing or whatever it is, the gear that I that I have acquired to, to use in that hobby is specifically designed for my comfort, but also for my success in whatever the hobby is, right? So for instance, when I went, I went backpacking with a buddy of mine who ended up just wearing like basketball shoes. And about halfway into the trip, his shoes were falling apart. There were holes, water was pouring in, right? That's why I wouldn't wear back, uh, basketball gear on a backpacking trip. So the gear that, that you have for your hobbies is specifically designed for that hobby. It sounds kind of funny, but, but this is the mind that Paul has when he writes this passage in Ephesians in chapter six. Basically what he's saying is, is this is the gear that will make you successful. Well, let's, let's hear what he says. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak words, Words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains and pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So whenever I, I read this passage, I, my, my memory goes back to, even though this is in the New Testament, what I envision is, is David. You know, David as a young teenager, is, as he's presented with this, with this battle against Goliath, and, and, and he's got to go out and, and, and fight this, 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 this giant. And, and what happens is in this conversation between him and, and Saul, Saul begins to put his armor, he begins to put Saul's armor on David. Now the problem is Saul is, is tall in stature, right? And he's a grown man. David is a, is a young teenager. And so we're putting all this, this armor on David and he, he can't quite he doesn't have the mobility. He's, it's all prohibitive for him as he, as he needs to go out and to, and to engage in this, in this battle, right? Like Saul's armor was the wrong gear for David. And so David goes out wearing his clothes and carrying a sling. And that's it because David understands that to defeat Goliath, he is not going to take man's armor. It's going to take God's armor. And so David goes out and defeats Goliath. I really love what Paul says here in Ephesians because what Paul says here is that our battle, our struggle is not against other men. Our struggle is not against men at all, but our struggle is against the powers of evil. 
You don't protect yourself against the powers of evil in earthly ways, right? It's not going to take man's gear, but God's, right? You don't protect yourself from evil in earthly ways. No matter how you vote, it's not going to change that fact. No matter what you post on social media, it's not going to change that fact. No matter what relationships are, are being destroyed based off of differences and beliefs, it's not going to change that fact that our, that our struggle isn't against each other but against the powers of evil. And so when we realize what the battle is, then we have to realize that that the gear we put on matters. We gotta put on the right gear. We gotta stop fooling around with with, with these inventions of men and put on the correct gear. And so what does Paul say that is? Man, the gear we put on is truth. It's righteousness. It's readiness, peace, faith, salvation. The word of God. This is the gear that he says we should arm ourselves as we go into battle. And then we can stand against evil and the devil's schemes in our world.